Good evening once again to you. Good to have you here this weekend. I'm David Oliver. Question tonight, how often do you think about the safety of the bridges that you drive on? Chances are most of us don't. But we're coming into a period of time now when we're all going to see a lot of Missouri bridges rehabbed or replaced, and here's why. Take a look at this map I want to show you right here. This is just showing you our area, the Ozarks right now. MoDOT maintains more than 10,000 bridges around the state. 900 right now are in poor condition. These triangles show you the ones that are in poor condition here in our area. Another map I want you to take a look at over here tonight as well. These are yellow dots here showing weight restricted bridges here, again, just in our area on this particular map. There are more than 1,100 weight restricted bridges in the Missouri area because they have decayed enough where they can't support certain amounts of normal traffic. In a color tent investigation here at 9, we see firsthand the process MODOT uses to inspect our bridges and why some say there's a critical concern to focus on bad bridges. You drive across them every day. You expect them to be safe. MODOT bridge engineer Matt Geiger is making sure they are. Um, as we're approaching this now, we can see the deck overhangs on the edges where the salt water has flowed over the edges and is eaten away at the edge of the deck. Geiger is part of a team with the MoDOT Southwest District Office, which will conduct about a thousand bridge inspections each year. He let me tag along on two recent bridge inspections to show us what he's looking for to keep you safe. This first bridge was built in 1964. Here we can see some white efflorescence buildup where cracks are starting to leak. Here, this is the bearings for a rocker bearing. Um, you can see that there's not the full thickness of the plate and the rockers as there used to be. So this bridge is about 55 years old. How many years has it taken to get to this point, would you estimate? Well, probably the first 20 years, it probably didn't have a whole lot of deterioration. And then the last 20 to 30 years, it's been getting worse and worse. Geiger documents details of deterioration. This bridge falls into the poor category. Despite its appearance, it's still safe to use for now. It is ugly. It is plenty safe to use. It is certainly not at operating at 100%, but all bridges are built with the factors of safety so that if you have some degree of deterioration, it's not going to fail. We traveled about 20 minutes away to see a little newer bridge that also falls into the poor category. This bridge here in Polk County, this one was built in uh, 1975. Most of the bridge is still in pretty reasonably good shape. But as you look at the supporting elements, the substructure, um, it has some deterioration in the piles here. Geiger says despite its failing condition, this bridge won't require a weight restriction just yet. It's slated for rehabilitation work next year that will extend the life of the bridge 20 to 30 years. And you'll start seeing more bridge work like what's planned here a lot more frequently in the next several years, according to District Engineer Steve Campbell. When you look at the fact we've got 1,800 bridges in this district and the vast majority of them were built in that 60s and 70s, uh, they're all cycling out. Would you call this a critical need? Yes, I would say. Critical needs for the Southwest District include our bridges and our employees. Campbell says his teams have increased focus and funding on bridges because of the rate at which they're falling into the poor category. In 2013, a little more than 100 bridges in southwest Missouri were considered poor. In just six years, that number nearly doubled. You take a 50-year design on a 1950 built bridge, uh, then you look at what people are driving today versus in 1950. The, the demands on bridges are quite different than they were when these bridges were initially built. And I just didn't realize, I take for granted, we all take for granted when we go across a bridge, it's safe. We just have that mindset, we cross them every day. And then when you get up underneath them and you look at them and some that are 60 years old, uh, 70, 80 years old, and you realize, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. this, this is not good. Governor Parson and the legislature passed a measure this last year that directs $50 million from state general revenue to repair or replace 45 bridges in 2020. Lawmakers also approved a $300 million bond program that will replace more than 200 other bridges over the next seven years. People are going to want to know who dropped the ball on this? Why haven't we been working on this for several years? Is that a fair question and is there an answer? Well, I think the, the fact of it is it's been going on for 22 years. We, we've, we've kept that fuel tax at the same price we have now for over two decades. 
we just frankly haven't done a very good job for a long time, and we've just kind of compiled these problems. It's one thing to drive around a pothole, but you're not going to drive around a bridge itself. But as MoDOT gets new money to help fix bad bridges, the cycle won't stop. A looming concern centers around bridges that are currently in fair condition. And that's what we're up against is that we're replacing X number, but we have more falling into the poor condition than we are currently replacing. Um, it's a step in the right direction what we're doing. I mean, you know, we're going to pick probably of the 900 bridges we got, eight to 900 bridges we got that's really classified as in poor condition. Mm -hmm. We're probably going to knock a third or more of them out with some of the funding we got. So, so that's a heck of a start. You may recall that voters soundly defeated a proposed gas tax hike in 2014 and again in 2018 that would have raised millions of dollars for those bridge projects. As MoDOT works to replace and uh, repair the bad bridges now, the agency is also using new design concepts to help reduce lane closures when maintenance is actually required on the newly built bridges in the future. I'll show you how that works coming up tomorrow night over on Color 10 News at 10.